Number 18. Verify that the linear speed of an ultra centrifuge is about 0.5 km per second and Earth in its orbit is about 30 km per second by calculating. Letter A. The linear speed of a point on an ultra centrifuge 0.1 meters from its center rotating at 50,000 revolutions per minute. All right, so let's focus on A first. So here is our ultra centrifuge. Here's a point on the ultra centrifuge's orbit. The orbit is circular. They told us the radius is 0.1 meters, and they did give us the uh, value of 50,000 uh, revolutions per minute, right? So this is revolutions per minute. And also note that these units denote that it is an angular speed, okay? So um, we're thinking to ourselves, now we have to find the linear uh, speed, and which is the same as tangential uh, speed or tangential velocity. So now what formula, I should say, relates the radius, angular velocity, and then tangential velocity? Well, we have the equation over here on the right. right? That's the one. But remember, uh, in order to calculate using that uh, formula, we need our angular velocity in radians per second. So we just have to do a little conversion here. Put the revolutions on the bottom, radians on the top, two pi for every one, right revolution and they go by all right that's a, this is one you have to memorize two pi radians for every one revolution um, and then minutes have to cancel so since they originate in the denominator i will place them in the numerator i'll go to seconds right away because i do know the relationship there 60 seconds in a minute and they cancel so this should be straightforward 50,000 times 2 times pi all divided by 60. so this works out to be 5.24 5.24 times 10 to the 3 radians per second. All right, that is great because now this means I can calculate, okay? So let's write uh, for letter A here, we're gonna write our formula. V is equal to R omega. So the radius was 0 0.100. The angular velocity here was 5.24 times 10 to the third. And now you just need to throw it on into the calculator. All right, so, well, yeah. Or you just reduce this value by one, right? Because it's just multiplying by a tenth. So it's 5.24 times 10 to the second. Remember, this is meters per second. Now that's the answer, all right? But we have to confirm that it matches up to 0.5 kilometers per second. So just remember, not writing this in scientific notation, that would be the same thing as writing 524 meters per second. And take this value, multiply it by a thousand. I mean, you could have, uh, excuse me, take it and divide it by a thousand. You could have also divided this by a thousand too. I'm just showing you a shortcut here. The decimals at this location, all you need to move is move that decimal three places to the left, and you will get your value in kilometers. So 524 kilometers per second. All right? So that takes care of that, and that does, that confirms it, right? All right, so now let's take a look at letter B. All right, so now letter B is talking about uh, the linear speed of Earth in its orbit uh, around the sun. Okay, use the data from the text. So here is Earth. The sun is right here at the center. And this number comes right from the text. It's 1.496 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. That is the radius of orbit, of Earth's orbit, that is, around the sun. Okay, so first thing is, um, we actually, in terms of the calculations, you do not have to convert this into meters, but I'm just always of the, of, of the habit of doing so just because, uh, you know, it's sometimes difficult to discern when you can and when you can't. So I just assume I can't and just do a conversion. It'll be a little longer, but um, I'd rather just stick with simple rules instead of trying to memorize every instance when I can and can't. So this value, um, take this value and multiply it by 1,000. Right, or just add three to the exponent. So the radius here is the same, right, as 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. All right, let me just erase this part B here. Let me give myself a little more space. All right, so this is the radius, all right? Now, uh, what is the angular velocity? Did they give it to us? They didn't, right? But do we know what it is? Well, I, I would... Think about it for a minute if you're not sure, all right? Remember, we're trying to find revolutions per time. You might think, well, you might have been first thinking radians per second, which is right, but don't think that way first. Think revolutions per time, 
all right? Because it's easier, because you know this, right? The revolutions, there's one revolution in one year. That is the angular velocity of Earth's orbit, all right? To go around one time, around the sun, one revolution, it takes a year. But the problem is that these units are not the correct units, right, to use. That's not a big deal. We just got to do a conversion now. So follow me on the upper left-hand side. So we got one revolution for every one year. Get rid of the revolutions. They go on the bottom radians on the top. Okay, two pi for every one. Gone. Now, years on the top. I'm going to go to days first, okay, because I know that there are 365 right, days in a year. So years cancel. Then I'm going to go to from days all right, to hours, because we know that there are 24 hours in a day. So that cancels. Then I'm going to go right to, just because of space here, I'm going to go right to seconds. All right, so hours, seconds, know that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. If you didn't know that, you would have gone to minutes, realizing that there are 60 minutes an hour, and then gone to seconds, realizing that there are 60 seconds in a minute. All right, we'll end up with the same result. So now let's just plug it in. So 2 pi divided by 365 times 24 times 3600. Make sure it's all in parentheses. And we get a value of 1.99 times 10 to the minus 7 radians per second. All right. So this is the angular velocity. Okay. Now we got enough to plug it all in, right? So V is equal to R omega. V is equal to 1.496 times 10 to the 11th, that's in meters, multiplied by the angular uh, velocity here, 1.99 times 10 to the minus 7 radians per second. And what do we get when we plug it in? So we get 1.496 times 10 to the 11th, multiplied by 1.99 times 10 to the negative 7th. And here we get a value of 29,000, I'll call it 800. 800 um, meters per second. Okay, that's the answer in meters per second. But remember, we just have to confirm that this is the same as 30 kilometers or approximately 30 kilometers per second. So remember, just move the decimal point now three places to the left and realize that it becomes now the velocity is 29.8 29.8 kilometers per second. All right, so that's very close to um, 30 there. And again, you know, I converted from kilometer to meter and then from meter back to kilometer. I didn't have to do that, but uh, there could have been a shorter way. Just plug in the kilometer value and you would have been fine. But again, I, I mentioned the uh, in the video, I mentioned the reasons why I like to do it the way I've done it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and uh, I will help you out with the next question. Take care.